Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Today, we are exploring a big question about the downstream implications of artificial intelligence on a particular slice of software, specifically the SaaS industry. The question we're going to ask, simply put, is generative AI inevitably going to eat the SaaS space? Now, there has been more and more chatter about this question over the last three or four months. Back in June, HFS wrote a piece called Generative AI Eats SaaS. The piece was prompted by a Salesforce earnings call that led to that company's stock tanking by about 20%. They write, The current economic model SaaS firms use to generate revenue and shareholder value is being upended as enterprise signal a fundamental shift in how they'll buy software in the future. While many financial analysts claim this is due to economic headwinds leading up to an enterprise IT spending slowdown, HFS believes the deeper issue is enterprises increasing focus on generative AI becoming the leading application and data orchestration vehicle in enterprise IT. So there are a couple things going on. First, there is a simple dollar and cents question. They write, we believe the advances in Gen AI typified by the recent OpenAI launch of ChatGPT 4.0 are making it impossible for C-suite executives to ignore, and they need to find budget from legacy SaaS investments to help fund Gen AI initiatives. Basically, there is some amount of one-to-one switch from SaaS spending over here to AI spending over there. However, they think that there's something more going on as well. This they characterize as enterprises reaching a breaking point being held hostage by SaaS premiums. They write, The dollars that SaaS firms have been able to charge based on user seat or endpoint have become so significant that enterprises are eager to revisit what they can build, not using emerging AI technologies to refactor, re-architect, and make new composable applications. Additionally, we see competitors emerging that can quickly build modules or data-centric software that can rapidly be adapted or actioned into use at fractions of the cost of third-party enterprise SaaS applications. In fact, ultimately, they liken the shift from SaaS to Gen AI to what SaaS did to on-premise software back in the early 2000s. They write, the trend mirrors the way Salesforce itself led a charge to replace monolithic on-premise enterprise applications and ushered in the cloud era. The rapid adoption of generative AI solutions to drive software and business processes may only take months. Therefore, many SaaS vendors can expect this shift to increasingly impact sales pipelines, revenues, and their customer-installed base. This, then, is the interesting context for news from Klarna that the company plans on shutting down both SaaS and Workday. On a conference call, Klarna CEO Sebastian Simiatkowski said, There are large ongoing internal initiatives that are a combination of AI, standardization, and simplification. As an example, we just shut down Salesforce. Within a few weeks, we will shut down Workday. We are shutting down a lot of our SaaS providers as we are able to consolidate. Now, Klarna has been very on the front of the AI transformation. OpenAI has a customer story about them on their website, discussing how after ChatGPT launched in November 2022, Klarna became the, quote, first European company and the first fintech firm globally to launch a ChatGPT plugin. Back in February, the company reported that its new AI assistant in its first month had handled two-thirds of customer service chats. That meant it was doing the equivalent work of 700 full-time agents. Klarna also said that the customer service chats handled by AI were on par with human agents in regard to customer satisfaction score, more accurate in terms of errand resolution, leading to a 25% drop in repeat inquiries, and much, much faster. The average time in which customers resolve their issues dropped from 11 minutes to less than two minutes. And that is, of course, to say nothing of the fact that it is 24-7 and can communicate in more than 35 languages. Perhaps unsurprisingly, then, Klarna is looking to reduce its workforce. The company announced that it would reduce its workforce over time by almost 50%. They said that its use of AI will enable it to reduce its staff from 3,800 to 2,000. Now, the approach that they're trying to take, they call natural attrition. Basically, they're saying they're not going to lay off people, but instead, as people move on to other jobs or seek new opportunities, the company will instead just opt not to replace them. The CEO did say that the company would not be employing common strategies like halting promotions, freezing pay raises, or increasing performance improvement plans in order to encourage people to leave. Instead, they'll just let the natural attrition do its work. So back to this idea of Klarna shutting down Salesforce and Workday. For many, this was confirmation of a bigger trend. Bindu Reddy writes, As AI engineers become prolific, you can create custom applications that are 10x cheaper to run than these SaaS applications. Investor Gokul Rajaram wrote, Enterprise SaaS stickiness. What stickiness? This news from Klarna should have every enterprise SaaS company shaking in their boots. If an internal team using AI can replicate 20 plus years of work and customization from Salesforce and Workday, to the extent the company doesn't feel the need to pay for these tools anymore, everything we know about stickiness and durability of enterprise software needs to be rethought in the light of AI. In fact, their comments indicate that they were able to use AI to rethink the products from first principles and make them simpler and easier to use. 
I wouldn't be surprised if the mandate of the head of IT at large enterprises gradually expands to not just negotiating supporting enterprise software licenses, but replacing them with custom-built products from the ground up, especially for the largest software products that cost seven to eight digits per year. There were also, however, some that were a little bit skeptical. Investor Rex Salisbury wrote, Klarna is ripping out their SaaS providers, including Salesforce and Workday. This is after reducing customer service headcount 50%, all because of AI. They are either one, getting amazing leverage from AI, or two, giving a masterclass on how to put a positive spin on layoffs. Reality is a bit of both, probably not getting as much leverage as it seems, but they are 100% capturing a lot of media attention. Great way to drive attention in advance of an IPO. The other skepticism is that there's more to software than just building the software in the first place. A16Z's Martin Casado writes, someone is going to learn that state consistency and integrations are hard. Zach Cantor quoted that and said, has been easy for 10 plus years now to build bespoke replacements for SaaS products. AI makes that even easier. The hard part isn't building it, it's operating and maintaining it when the best engineers want to solve problems for customers, not upgrade your crappy Salesforce clone. Buco Capital had a similar thought. Regarding Klarna ripping out Salesforce and Workday, even if it's true, is it actually the best use of capital to rebuild in-house? Feels like a massive distraction, especially when your business has no path to selling the in-house solution. I'm deeply skeptical the math works. Another investor, Steven Sinofsky, responded, The number of internal tools that turned into successful side hustles is effectively zero. The number of times this has been tried is absurdly high. Still, it's hard not to ignore the tread lines. Separately last week, Rohan Paul had tweeted a video of someone creating a full-stack SaaS app with just Cursor and Anthropic. And increasingly, this is being done by people who have never coded before. Now, I do think it's true that there is a lot more that goes into software than just the code to release it in the first place. But it feels fairly undeniable that there is going to be a shift in how we think about these things. If you want to read more about this, I would recommend A16Z's essay, Death of a Sales Force, Why AI Will Transform the Next Generation of Sales Tech. For now, though, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Appreciate you listening or watching as always. And until next time, peace.